it's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shalee Village. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm shooting this video to share some differences between Our History Revealed Volume 1 or Year 1 and Our History Revealed Volume 2 or Year 2 and then some slight Our History Revealed Volume 1 changes. So I've got a lot of questions and so I want to address all of them in one quick, hopefully, video. Okay, so let's get started with Our History um, Revealed 1. Volume 1, Year 1, 1. Any one of those works, and I'll know what you're talking about. So I want to get started with what it covers. Um, and I've done a video before where I listed all of the books that you would need for the curriculum, but I've had a lot of requests to just go a little bit more in depth I'm not going to go through all the books again because you can go back to that video. Um, plus, I did that years ago. I would have to go scrounging around all those books. That's not how I want to spend my time. So I'm going to just quickly go through to answer the questions because I believe that's really what you want out of me. So let's start with the table of contents. The table of contents is available to download, a free download for you on my blog, marashalee.com. But I'm going to go ahead and go through it in this video too so you can hear it. Um, week one, history and the first Americans. Week two, native North Americans. Week three, Vikings, Columbus, and other explorers. Week four, Africa's transition and Jamestown. So you can see in those first four weeks, we're not even in America, right? I'm kind of explaining um, some of the history that happens right up until America becomes, I don't know, known for its involvement in the slave trade, right? We go straight from Africa's transition into Jamestown. And then that's where we kind of begin American history. But there's a few things that they need to know before. We can't just plop into 1619 Jamestown, Virginia, USA, right? So I kind of do a little back work on those first three to four weeks. Now week five, newcomers in the new world. Week six, Squanto and the first Thanksgiving. Week seven, William Penn, Quakers, and the Puritans. Week 8, the 13 original colonies. Week 9, slavery in the colonies. Week 10, African Americans in the colonies. Week 11, the southern colonies. Week 12, the French and Indian War. Week 13, change in the English colonies. Week 14, the American Revolution. Week 15, black leaders during the American Revolution. Week 16, stories about the revolution. Week 17, 13 colonies become one nation. So now we're around 1776. Week 18, the Wilderness Road. Week 19, the Louisiana Purchase. We're already at the beginning 1800s. Week 20, the adventures of Lewis and Clark with York. Week 21, inventions that change the world. Week 22, paths to freedom part one. Week 23, paths to freedom part two. Week 24, the Underground Railroad, part one, and then week 25, the Underground Railroad, part two. So we are well into the 1800s. Week 26, the story of the Alamo. Week 27, trails of expansion and the gold rush. Week 28, black frontiers in the Old West. Week 29, America before the Civil War. Week 30, the Civil War. And week 31, historical figures of the war and the West. And week 32, Reconstruction. Week 33, the Railroad and the Wild Wild West. And then week 34, which will is the concluding week. So week 34 is my state report. So um, the children will conduct a state report on their state of choice preferably their home state, right? So that's where that ends. This particular year one is written for elementary and middle grades or junior high, if you will, students. So somewhere about first and second grades, depending on how well they can write, all the way through about seventh grade, you could probably extend it to eighth grade if you add the um, upper grades extensions that I have written in the 
um, curricula for you, right? So we're talking about first to eighth or second to eighth grade, really kind of honing in on second to seventh. And a first grader can do it if they can pretty write pretty decently or if you're willing to write for them. And then an eighth grader can do it as long as you're willing to do the extra extensions or maybe they're just not an advanced eighth grader and they just want to have a relaxed schedule, then of course, by all means. Okay, so that is year one. I want to talk a little bit about um, the contents of the features inside. So you'll have what's called a history note. The history note kind of introduces you to the weekly and the daily topic. It'll be a weekly topic if it's on day one. Day one always introduces what you'll learn for the week. And it'll be a daily topic if you're on day one as well and any other day. Then you have the history narrative, which is the spine of what they'll be reading. You have the history connection, which is the activity for um, that particular lesson, which is where the student journal, for the most part, comes into play. Then you have the history add-on. It's an extension of the history program. It's an extension to the lesson that you're already doing. It's optional. You can do it or not. You have the historical literature, which are readouts that I have scheduled for um, a parent or an adult to read to the child, of course, um, with the upper grammar students, like kind of four through seven, eight, they can read to themselves if they like, or their parents can also do the read aloud. And then the last box is state study, where they learn about um, the different states as they join the colony or later join the U.S. of A. once it becomes a nation. So that's pretty much how that looks. I am going to try to read um, a complete lesson for you. Yes, here we go. So week five, day one. Week five is newcomers in the new world. And the history note reads, much of the focus um, today is on Africa as the Atlantic slave trade begins. The primary goal is for your students to understand the difference between a slave and an indentured servant. It's important for students of history to know that Africans did not start out enslaved by Europeans, nor did they enter the New World originally enslaved. The institution of American slavery began as after Africans were already settled in North America. Last, help your student understand the difference between traditional slavery and American slavery. Slavery was not a new practice during this time, but, but American slavery brought about its own laws, much different than any other conditions before, and worked to strip Africans of their homes, culture, and identities. Um, your child will study this difference more throughout the year. So that's the history note, right? It kind of gets you um, prepped to what you're going to be studying for uh, the week or the day, depending on which day you're on. In this case, we're on day one. Then the history narrative tells them exactly what they're going to be reading. In this case, they're going to be reading out of two books. The first one is Building a New Land, and then the next one is Making 13 Colonies. So they're going to read those, um, the stories of the assigned reading in those two books, and then they're going to move down to the history connection. The history connection um, in this case is a timeline edition where they're adding the Dutch settled Manhattan Island, 1607, and the first Africans arrive in America. The history add-on, they're going to read If You Lived When There Was Slavery in America and read that assigned reading. And then in their historical lit, uh, lower grammar is reading a chapter out of A Lion to Guard Us, and then upper grammar is reading a chapter out of A Misfortune. Then they're going to end the day with um, some information about a particular state, in this case, Virginia. So every time the um, geography box won't have them doing learning something on their own about the state, even though that is included. There is a whole reader that they have on the 50 states. But sometimes I just give them little information about the state they're, they're already learning about. In this case, it's Virginia because they are learning about Jamestown. And so I just give them a natural wonder in Virginia. I call it Blue Majesty. The Blue Ridge Mountains are one of the most ecologically diverse places in the world. 100 tree varieties, 54 mammals, and 1,600 plant species call Blue Ridge home. And that's kind of a little blurb they have about Virginia there. And that ends that lesson for that day. Um, this is what the history student journal looks like here. And so it will come. You'll 
when you order, um, as people have been ordering, you'll have to decide if you have a lower grammar or an upper grammar student, and then it will come with those sheets. But let's see. Yes. So, of course, they were learning about indentured servants and, and, um, and enslaved persons. So, in this case, it says, draw a picture that shows how African and European indentured servants worked and lived together prior to 1660. Then write a caption describing the picture. So, they'll, there's plenty of pictures in the books. They've read a lot about it. They'll create their own illustration and then record um, their caption. Okay, so that is what our history revealed Africans in America's year one looks like. So the differences. The differences between year one and year two is in year two, elementary is not included. And the reason for that is because most of American history, you know, curriculum that's on the market, it already assumes modern American history. So they're going to learn about the presidents and they're going to learn about, you know, civil rights and the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, right? It's pretty much going to cover like 1900 on. So then the market is saturated with elementary material for that particular historical era. What was lacking in the especially from an African-American presence, like that point of view, what was lacking was the early. So I wanted to make sure that I included elementary students when I was um, writing the early. So if parents or families wanted them to understand what did America look like prior to like the Civil War, they had something that was African-American focused. When we transition to the next historical era in American history because it tends to be split in early American and modern American. When we transition, there's a lot of stuff for elementary students, so I didn't see the need to reinvent the wheel. What's not there is content for elementary, I'm sorry, is content for middle and high with the African American focus. So I wanted to um, focus in on those students and make sure they had the content that they needed. So, um, we leave off here. You heard me. Let me grab it again. I mentioned the table of contents. We left off the railroad and the Wild West right after Reconstruction. So year two is going to pick up right after Reconstruction, you know, maybe 30 years after the Civil War. Um, and we're going to look at what America looks like then in general and then specifically the African-American journey. Okay? The other difference is going to be, let me grab a page here, in year one it is called a history note, in year two it's called history happenings. Um, and that's because year two is written, year two because it serves middle and high school students, it's written directly to the student. Where year one served elementary and middle and it was written to the parent. So I just switched it up because of my audience changed. So it's history happenings in year two for the students. Um, what's also, all right, in year one, history narrative is where you're gonna get the history story. And in year two, it's called the heart of history. It serves the same purpose. I just changed the names because my audience changed. Okay, in year one, they are completing a history add-on. History add-on doesn't exist in year two. And I'll explain that when I get to year two. And they're also, they have historical literature. They also have historical literature in year two, but it's called Living Lit. And then in year one, they have state study. And in year two, they they don't really have state study. There's only two countries, I'm sorry, there's only two states that gets added in the modern era, Hawaii and Alaska. And I am going to um, put that in the lessons for year two so the students know, hey, Alaska just became a state, Hawaii just became a state. Um, the last thing I wanted to note for year one is a change in the book. So when I first published year one, I used the living history of the world, ancient Americas through the gold rush, and it was published by Angela O'Dell, and it looked like this. 
and this was me cutting the spine it doesn't come spiral bound and she redid the cover and then the cover looked like this so either one of these would be the same the cover was just redone um, and then I believe she started publishing with another publishing company and so with master books and so now it looks like this so you'll want to get this copy from master books because the other ones are dated you won't be able to find them and if you do they'll be like really really pricey um on like amazon or um a third party retailer so you'll want to get uh, this copy right here and yes while the content is exactly the same she's added pictures to it um, where like some of these pictures didn't exist in the first two editions so the page numbers aren't exactly lining up you'll be able to figure it out because the chapter lines up chapter by chapter but the pages don't line up so I am going to publish a little cheat sheet or a reference chart in case you have an older version of Our History Reveal Year One, but you have a new book. You can know exactly which pages you need to go to using the new book if you have an older version of the published curriculum. Okay, so I hope that answers um, all of your questions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom.